Hello and welcome, it's yours truly, Brian Earle. I'm here at Christmas Past Headquarters in sunny San Mateo, California, and I hope that wherever you happen to be in the world, you're having a great day, that you're happy and healthy, and that most importantly, you've got the Christmas spirit, just like I do every day of the year. You know, a couple days ago, some of the folks over at the Christmas Past Facebook group were engaged in a very lively discussion about Christmas podcasts. Now, some of you only know me from the YouTube channel, so you might be surprised to learn that I have a Christmas podcast called Christmas Past. And one of the great things about being a Christmas podcaster is seeing all of the new Christmas podcasts coming out all the time, all throughout the year. In fact, it's the middle of July right now, and just a couple of weeks ago, a brand new podcast called Deck the Hallmark came out, and this is something that's been going on for quite a while. I've noticed that most new Christmas podcasts fall into one of a couple of categories. There are the ones that talk about the history of Christmas traditions, like mine. There are the comedy Christmas podcasts, like Can't Wait for Christmas. And then there are the movie and television review podcasts, like Deck the Hall, Mark, uh, Tis the Podcast, and many others besides. And it really got me thinking, Christmas is such a large topic, it runs wide and deep, that if a new Christmas podcast were to come out, what would be on my wish list? I feel like there are so many opportunities for Christmas podcasts to be really interesting and really stand out. So we came up with some ideas that we, I thought I would share now, and I even came up with names and some concept cover art for them, because of course I did, and we're just going to go through them right now. Uh, number one is a podcast that I'm going to call Plum Pudding. Uh, the history of Christmas cuisine is very, very interesting, especially from the Victorian times. The uh, plum pudding and the things like um, uh, older recipes for gingerbread. If you listen to episode four of the, of the Christmas Past podcast, I did this whole episode about gingerbread where I talk about how the gingerbread we know today is almost nothing at all like what it used to be. So a podcast where maybe some chefs or food historians go into a deep dive on the history of Christmas cuisine. Maybe in every episode they try out a recipe and then discuss it or something like that. So that is podcast on my wish list number one plum pudding. Number two is something I'm calling Moon Racer. Uh, Tis the Podcast was very gracious and had me on as a guest last season. We talked about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And in that, we had this little side discussion about the Island of Misfit Toys, where we meet King Moon Racer. And he talks about how every night he goes out looking for toys that are going to be forgotten. And I sort of made an offhand remark that, you know what? Someone ought to make a work of fan fiction that really retells the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, at least the story that we see in the television special, from the perspective of Moon Racer and from the perspective of life on the island of misfit toys, where we could really develop the relationships between those misfit characters and really we'll get to learn more about them. I think that can be really interesting, and maybe it's a, a serialized short story, maybe it's an audio drama, but there's a lot of potential there for creativity. So Moon Racer is wishlist podcast number two. Number three, Tinsel Tunes. We have so much great Christmas music. Most of it came from the 1940s, I've noticed, and we've had little resurgences. Every decade kind of produces one or two hits, and all of them have interesting stories behind them. Did you know, for example, that Silver Bells was almost going to be called Tinkle Bells until one of the songwriters, uh, co-songwriters' wives reminded him that, you know, tinkle is actually slang for pee, and so they, they changed it to silver bells. Did you also know that the song that we know as the Christmas song, also known as Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, that was written during the middle of a heat wave. One of the songwriters was Mel Torme, a very famous and well-known songwriter, and they wrote that song in the middle of the summer in an effort to sort of help them think coolly, to, to beat the heat, as it were. So Tinsel Tunes, the stories behind the great songs of Christmas. Number three, Christmas cozies. When I think of Christmas, I would say that cozy is one of like the top three adjectives I would use. I'd say like enchanting, magical, nostalgic, and very cozy. And a whole podcast just all about coziness, just all about like pajamas and hot chocolate and snuggling around a fire and just... Uh, I don't even know what the podcast would be. I don't know if it would just be someone talking about cozy things or maybe two people just discussing things that make them feel cozy when it comes to Christmas, but that would just be a really, really fun podcast. I would listen to that in a heartbeat. The next one on the list, Santa Science. Uh, and this doesn't have to be necessarily about the science or physics of Santa Claus, but all of the science 
that has to do with Christmas. There's all kinds of agricultural science that goes into producing poinsettias, uh, for example. Did you know that the poinsettias we get are uh, really the product of lots and lots and lots of uh, agricultural science, that poinsettias in the wild look nothing like the potted versions we get. They're actually very wide and the leaves sort of spread out. These nice potted Christmas uh, poinsettias that we're all used to are, are very much a modern uh, invention. There's also all kinds of science that would go into Christmas baking, right? Like bakers that like to talk about the science of baking and how all of the ingredients interact with one another. How do those green Christmas cherries get so bright green? There's just a lot of science behind Christmas that if some kind of scientist would really take a deep dive on that, that would be great. Someone who's already come close to that is uh, Nate from the show about science. And if you haven't listened to Nate's podcast, oh my goodness, you really have to. It, it, it's fantastic. Uh, and he has done some stuff on the NORAD Santa Tracker and talked to Santa one time. Uh, it was just an adorable episode and it really left me hungry for more stuff like that. And the final one on the wish list for Christmas podcast is one that I'm calling Making Merry. And this is all about handmade or personalized Christmas gifts. This is something I try to do more and more every year, that more of the gifts that I give are either handmade or personal or personalized rather than just buying something off the shelf or giving uh, something like an Amazon gift card. My wife and I have a little tradition where every year we pick out a card from that game, Apples to Apples, and it would just be some sort of uh, ambiguous keyword. Uh, for example, a couple of years ago, the keyword was action adventure. And every gift we gave one another had to somehow relate to the theme of action adventure. And so one of the things that I did was I hired an artist to draw an action adventure style poster, like those old Indiana Jones movie posters. That was a picture of her working on her novel. She was writing a novel at the time. And it was just this really cool, unique gift, totally one of a kind, uh, didn't cost any more or less than any other gift I would have bought her, but it was 100% unique because we were just giving ourselves this creative thinking exercise of trying to think within certain constraints. So I'm really all about that. And I know that so many crafters are, and there's so many unique personalized gifts that you can get through places like Etsy and others. So a whole podcast dedicated to not only creating those kinds of gifts, but just that kind of a movement that making Christmas gift giving a lot more personal and a lot more of giving part of yourself through the gift rather than just buying stuff online. I know that's part of Christmas nowadays too, and I buy, I buy plenty of gifts online, but the more personal it can be, the more personal it feels to receive a gift like that. So those are my six wish list Christmas podcast. And I will say this, I'll probably say it again in another, in another video. If you are interested in making one of these podcasts, those ideas are free for the taking. I'll even send you the cover art if you want to use it. Or if you have any other idea for a Christmas podcast and you don't know where to start, you need some help, come to the contact page at christmaspast.media, find all the different ways you can get in touch with me, and I promise you, I will help you any way I know how. I'm being a little selfish there, because if we can get a new Christmas podcast out there, well, that's one more for me to listen to. But I really do love helping people get their Christmas podcasts off the ground. So again, come to the contact page at christmaspast.media, just get in touch with me. I'll be one of your first subscribers, one of your first evangelists, and together we will make the Christmas podcast world more robust, more diverse, and just more filled with Christmas spirit. Now, hey, if you liked this video, you know what I'm about to ask you. Give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and keep coming back for more. And I hope to see you again very soon.